Tiki. Hey guys, Hook Tiki here. I am here today to give you a little tutorial on donning your prosthetic arm. And this is particularly for my my electric users and making sure that your electrodes on your prosthetic line up in the same position every time. It's pretty important. That way you don't have to do as many recalibrations of your components once you have your arm on. So let's get started. Hey, I'm back. I'm here to show you what I go through in my process to don my prosthetic on. Donning means putting it on. So this is my prosthetic arm. I They are going to range a little bit differently. Here's the inside. As you can see on mine, I have little archways and openings. And in the archways, I have sensors on them on all four sides. So what I want to do is be able to put on my prosthetic arm so that those sensors line up on my arm pretty much the same way every time. Um, and most prosthetic arms are going to go on fairly uh, exact each time, but there is a little bit of movement that can occur within the arm depending on how it fits and uh, your length of amputation and many other factors. So this is a old prosthetic arm. Um, shout out to uh, some tiki there. So, but inside you can see that this is an older style, a uh, little bit different shape. It's a little bit flatter, uh, has two circuits in it. Um, this is a dynamic arm and uh, I'm not bagging on the maker of this uh, socket, but the, the socket was a little loose for my electric arm. And what I need is something that is a lot tighter. So what I did is I'm gonna do a little shout out is went to BioDesigns and this is their Hi-Fi socket. So the high fidelity socket, what it does is it squeezes in around your arm and makes everything real tight without sacrificing comfort. And with that, I get great control of my myoelectric arm. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the process. Um, first thing is I um, always take my prehensor. Right now I'm using an ETD2, but I always take the prehensor off. Uh, you don't want to put any pressure on your prehensor while it's connected to your arm. You have some very uh, sensitive components in here that could break, and I've actually broke them in the past. So that was a lesson, hard lesson to learn for myself. Uh, so anyway, get your arm. Um, most arms are going to have a vacuum or a seal at the end. And what the seal does is two things. is It allows for you to pull your arm in with what is called a pull sock. And this is what a typical pull sock looks like. It's nice and long. What you do is you invert the pull sock. And yes, I still use my mouth for a lot of things, unfortunately, until I get my arm on. <laughs> so you're going to invert the pole sock. It's going to make it shorter. And what I'm going to do is pull the sock around me. The, your prosthetist will measure your arm and order you the correct pole sock for uh, whatever your, your length is and your, your girth of your arm is. And they want it tight. Uh, what this is is made out of nylon, parachute material, and it has good uh, slippage or has really low friction when you put your arm into the socket and you're able to pull this out of that aforementioned uh, air vent hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you that today. But first I'm going to show you something on my pole sock that you might want to talk to your prosthesis about. There's no way for me to really stick my arm down into my socket and get this through that hole without, I'm going to take that off and get the one that has been modified without some kind of tether at the end. You want to make sure you get this tether because otherwise you're going to be really frustrated trying to put your arm on. So let's go ahead and do that now. Again, shoot them out. So let's get this sock on. And I'm also going to show you a little device I used to kind of save my arm. Um, 
what I do is I have this little block that I made. You can see it sits off the ground a little bit. It has a hole in it, a little bit oval shaped, so that I can put my prosthetic arm into this hole without it touching the ground. And I'm going to give a little show of that. So there's that. It's actually, there's about an inch clearance from the ground. This thing bottoms out. And so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and don that prosthetic arm. So I'm going to take this tip. I'm going to reach down inside. Unfortunately, I can't get the video. But you can see it comes out the bottom here nice and easily. So I'm going to pull that through as I push my arm into the socket. And so now once I'm in the socket, um, things should line up based on because the socket was formed to fit around the circumference of your arm. So when if your arm has some movement in there, even with the, with the arm already in the socket, maybe it's too loose. Maybe you need to get a tighter socket. Uh, that's a big problem that most people run into with my electrics uh, is not, it's not having the socket tight enough. And I'm going to get into this, some of the uh, pros and cons of having a better socket and maybe going with a high vice system like I did. So anyway, I get the arm in. And so now I have a little bit of the uh, pole sock sticking out of the top and it's on the inside too. I want to make sure my shirt doesn't get pulled down inside there too if you're wearing one. And what I do, I start to pull nice and slowly. Sorry about the noise. Pull nice and slowly all the way around the, the sock. So I'm pulling a little bit from this end. I pull a little bit from this end, pull it with this end. And what it does, you'll see the sock starting to slip down inside my prosthetic. Is it pulling my skin a little bit at a time and then my skin sticks to the inside of the socket. And what that does is it prevents any kind of slippage back. And so I'm just going around pulling, pulling, pulling. This thing is now at about this level. I can feel the sock down to here. Right now, uh, you can't feel anything up here, but it's really sticky against my, my skin right now. So I know that I have a good fit. When I'm talking about lining up the prosthetic, <laughs> I unfortunately have a tattoo here that I know that the end of my tattoo lines up with a certain spot on my prosthetic. Other people might need to do is get a little line and maybe even use your freckles or even have a little mark on your skin that can line up with your prosthetic each time. That way you know that you're not twisted inside of it. Uh, so there we go. I pulled my sock completely out now. So you notice I haven't stood up yet. Um, I still have my arm inside the sock and I'm still putting pressure on it. I, now I can feel the bottom of my arm touching the bottom of the prosthetic inside. That's a good sign. If it's not, you haven't pulled in all the way and you want to maybe push down more when you're pulling your sock out to force your arm all the way into that bottom. But now when I do relax and I'm just kind of, I don't lift up yet, but I relax, I can flex my muscles and I feel that there's no air gaps within my prosthetic. There's nothing like bubbling or making any noises, that means I have a nice tight fit. So next thing I do before I stand up is take my air valve and I'm going to shove it in here and squeeze out any air by pushing down and, and forcing that the little one-way valve to squeeze out any air that's trapped in there. So now I have a nice tight fit. So now what I do is take your strapping. Strapping is going to be different depending on what type of prosthetic you own. Um, I have a single strap that goes around my chest. Uh, for women, uh, it might vary a little bit. They do do a figure eight strap that goes around your back that might be more comfortable. Um, I've seen a lot of different variations. Again, talk to your process and figure out what works best for you. So I'm going to take my strap, go around my back, and come around the front here. And this is going pretty high up on my rib cage, almost right underneath my armpit. And what that does is I have the most muscle, chest muscle, surrounding that area. When you get it down here, it might feel more comfortable, but you don't have as much muscle base against your chest right there and your ribs. And what that tends to do is causes a little bit of a, a pain in your ribs after wearing them. Your strap also, you don't want it to be overly tight. Uh, you don't want to be 
cranking that thing down, making sure it's super tight on your arm. You want it to be comfortable. And so my prosthesis is actually sewn in Velcro to the spot, which should be optimal for me. And it does not pull through. And, and what it does is it gives me some comfort. I still have some slack here, but when it's down, it's nice and taut and sturdy. Uh, the shoulder strap should be nice and sturdy, but not too tight to where it's taking up all the weight from the prosthetic. You want, you want to be equal weight distribution between your arm and the suction that is on within the prosthetic itself. So now that I am totally squared up with my prosthetic, I am going to turn it on and get this thing going. And um, with all prosthetics, it takes you know a couple seconds to turn on. Um, you'll feel a little vibration. I have uh, the Inspire Pro uh, Myoelectric, and it gives you about 10-15 seconds before it turns on. There we go. I got some control. Um, again, um, whatever prehensile you're going to wear, I got my ETD2, or I can go with my Ilim Ultra Revolution. Um, let's go ahead and put this one on. And so, again, now that your arm's on, it's nice and steady. Putting your prehensile on should not be that big of a deal. Um, just give it a good force. Uh, give it a little bit of twist. The thing will connect and stay real secure for you. And you can see I got power and movement and I can operate my hand. Hey guys, so I hope this video helped you uh, learn a little bit about donning a prosthetic and it will give you some pointers to maybe go and talk to your prosthetist about maybe getting a really nice tight fit like this hi-fi system or even having the little tassel put on your pull sock. Uh, there's a lot of little things that can make a difference and I encourage you to explore them and really talk and be have an open relationship with your prosthetist. I think it's really important. Your arm is going to become a part of you for the rest of your life and you want it to fit and work the best. So take care and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.